Bonafide Hustler here, and today we're going to talk about really awesome flips that have occurred this year from garage sales to eBay. What's going on, guys and gals? Chris, the Bonafide Hustler, coming to you live from the inside of my kitchen, well, my dining room, really. And uh, I got a little booklet right here, and we're going to be talking about uh, some items that I found this year and they all came from garage sales and I flipped it on eBay. So don't forget to follow me on Instagram at the Bonafide Hustler. And you can also get the free money making guide right here. It's the first link down below and it'll teach you great items. Well, actually 50 of them uh, that you can commonly find at thrift stores and garage sales that you can flip and resell for more money. Okay, so there are about six items I wanna discuss with you. This is gonna be a little bit more of a shorter video, um, but these are great items with incredible incredible turnaround. So remember, I picked this stuff up from garage sales and I flipped it on eBay, all happening this year so far. To me, these are the best flips to date, okay? I mean, I've had great flips, but these are just the ones that kind of stick out. They're like the outliers. The very first one is a Filson bag, all right? So this was a Filson briefcase bag. It was $5 and it sold for $299.99. That's right. Now that's some bags to bucks, boom, right there. I've always been preaching about bags and how they're like incredible sleeper type items. Whether you go to a thrift store or a garage sale, it just seems that they get vastly underpriced, especially when there's a good one. Now CC Filson is a great bag brand. It's one of the best ones that you can be looking out for. I was really surprised that this one sold for $300. I honestly thought it was gonna sell for like 200 or so. But when you look at the site and you look at the actual color of the bag on the site, I mean, these things are A, either discontinued, or B, they're around $500. So getting one that's in great condition for $300, obviously the buyer wins, get good feedback, that whole thing. Filson bag, $5 to $300 to $299.99. That was a great flip. Uh, second uh, thing I want to talk about is um, a pair of binoculars. These were Leitz Trinovid binoculars. Obviously, on any binoculars, you can kind of see um, the brand. You can see the... Um, like optic length and everything like that. Um, I found two of these things, all right? So I spent $20. Um, and while these pictures look alike, one of them is different. Um, so the first one that was $10 sold for $350, which is nuts um, on eBay. It didn't take very long either. I think I was asking like $449 or something like that. And then weeks later, I sold the second $10 pair of binoculars for $299.99. Now, what makes this so special? Leitz is basically, from what I understand, it's what Leica became later. So everyone has heard of Leica cameras and Leica optics and that kind of stuff. Well, Leitz is basically, it's basically Leica. Like if you held a Leitz binocular, it, would, it feels just like a Leica binocular. Um, it's built better, to be honest, um, because it was built in a time where there were less plastics and less things like that, so it just feels robust and real good. And these were tiny binoculars. These are, I wouldn't call them pocket binoculars, but they're kind of close to pocket style. You know, good for bird watching basically. And I think that's probably who bought it, was like a bird watcher type person for both of those binoculars. Two totally separate buyers. Um, so yeah, the first one sold for 10 bucks, uh, sold for 350. Next one, 10 bucks, sold for 299. Funny thing is, <laughs> gosh, at that garage sale, I made like a thousand dollars, over a thousand dollars pretty quickly. Um, I also found a $5 football or maybe a $20 football that sold for 500. That was kind of interesting, but that's not gonna be on this video um, because that actually sold last year. Um, and then the other thing that sold from that garage sale was a, um, a jar. I'll just leave it like a jar. I'll just say it like that. A jar that was, I think like five or 10 bucks and that sold for like 275. But it's a jar and it's in one of my guides. So, um, but yeah, these Leeds binoculars, that's an, a great example of high ticket items to buck. So you can kind of see that. Um, although that isn't in the guide, but that's a perfect example of that kind of an item. Um, these were just at a garage sale where someone, I think it was almost like an estate sale garage sale where someone had passed away and there was all this cool stuff inside. Looking back at it now, I kind of regret not buying more things, but I think I bought a lot of great things from that garage sale. Um, with binoculars, obviously you want to test them out and like, you know, get them in focused and everything like that and make sure there's no like double images or anything. Um, if you know much about binoculars, they twist this way, that way. There's like... Um, their focus rings and things like that. There's a lot of, you know, focus things. You have to like mess with all of them. Um, but binoculars make really good money. If you're looking at Leeds, you're going to be looking at Leica. You're going to look at Swarovski. Like you want to be knowing about the big brands like that. 
because they do have incredible amounts of resale. You best bet that I actually padded the the crap out of these binoculars. Let me tell you right now, because those are this pretty big deal. Um, and binoculars are one of those things, optics, cameras, things like that, that can kind of get out of alignment or things can get kind of jarred up if you're not padding them enough when you ship them off. So something to keep in mind. Basically comprises two items right there. So we have the Filson bag, we have two pairs of binoculars, we have three more items to go. One um, was a $10, this was not too long ago, $10, and flipped this to 300 a white mountain ice cream maker. That's right, and this was an electric version of a rival white mountain ice cream maker. You would never think that people would pay such high amounts for ice cream makers, but yeah, $10 into $300. Um, you know, there's, a hand, there's hand crank models, and there are the electric ones, and it seems like they both sell great. Um, it's probably like the 10th ice cream maker that I've flipped. And, um, you know, when you get into these kind of items, you wanna make sure that the actual cranking unit or the auto cranking unit um, can, you know, stay in there pretty good. So there's a couple little twist clasp things that you have to mess with. Um, you also have to ma make sure that the churning device, the actual silver device, you know, has the stirring wand thing in there. And it also has the kind of fulcrum point at the bottom of the, um, the tub. There's like a fulcrum point, it looks like a, almost like a little pyramid. And that's what the actual, you know, ice cream <laughs> twisty cylinder thing like spins on, right? It spins on this kind of like thing. And then you fill in the sides with like rock salt, ice, whatever it is, and then you make ice cream. So anyway, you would never think that something like that, it was a very unsuspecting kind of item, but at a garage sale, you could flip this on eBay for around $300. So that's pretty good. Most of the ones that I've resold have shaken out between two and $300. So, okay. Next item, number five, is a Descent XL um, ski suit, which is cool because I found this on a Sunday at garage sales. I just decided to randomly go out to garage sales and that Sunday I bought, I bought a pair of Vans from this garage sale for five bucks. I bought that ski suit thing um, for $20 and this ski suit thing sold for 200. That was great on eBay, really, really fast, like under a week. Um, I was asking three, I often do that. I ask way above where it needs to be. Um, and you'd be surprised how many people kind of buy it at the top. Um, but I also like, uh, you know, go, okay, like I'm really wanting two, 250. So I listed for three, right? Does that make sense? Um, so yeah, the Scent XL suit, it was in great condition. I even put it on like, per, you know, partied around a little bit in the garage, took some cool pictures and then that was it. I immediately folded it up and I put it into a poly mailer thing. And uh, not even a week later, it sold. So that was that was really nice. Obviously, you want to check these things for rips, tears, snags, whatever, especially around the ankle and cuff area, because that's where they get kind of like you know torn to pieces because of the boots and all the grinding with all the stuff that anyway. So kind of a nice item to find at the garage sale. Mm, slightly unsuspecting, but it's very retro looking, very cool. Uh, but a nice flip, regardless. Now, last item is super unsuspecting. You would think it'd be, you know, one of those things that everyone would just know about. But this shirt, A, was tattered to pieces. Um, B, the only reason I really picked it up was, and I picked it up for like a dollar or two. So I took a dollar or two and I turned it into 165 with this shirt right here that you're seeing. And this is a vintage Red Hot Chili Peppers um, concert shirt. So that was neat. Now, the color to me wasn't really indicative of a vintage t-shirt. Right, and it was really, I mean, I guess vintage t-shirts, by the time they get worn and, you know, moved around it and everything like that, they can lose some of their <clears throat> A, elasticity, and B, some of their thickness, it seems, right? So um, this wasn't a popular, like, t-shirt brand, like Screen Stars or anything like that. In fact, the tag, I couldn't even tell what the shirt was, but in comparison to other vintage t-shirts that were Red Hot Chili Peppers, it had, the main logo, which was cool, very indicative of potentially an early 2000s or a late 90s shirt. Um, the single stitch sleeve was the main reason why I picked it up. So in the picture, you can obviously see the single stitch sleeve and that was like the big one. So yeah, single stitch sleeve, Not I'm not saying buy every shirt that's single stitch sleeve, but that is a dead giveaway a lot of times in thicker collars um, to, you know, potentially viable t-shirt type material. Now, of course, the most Expensive t-shirts that buy, that are bought and resold um, are typically pop culture type things or things that have to do with movies um, or sports teams, right? So pop, pop culture, you know, movies, music, sports teams.
that's pretty much you have, what you have to remember. And then um, since vintage tees are bought and resold all the time, you just run that crap through eBay and you can just kind of see what it'll shake out at. Whether you're dealing with a vintage champion tee that is the LA Raiders, or you have, you know, something from Jurassic Park, the movie from back in the 90s, you know, it's all the same stuff. You can kind of look up the shirt brand. As long as you have that single stitch sleeve, it's definitely a good place to start when you're dealing with these vintage t-shirts. Now, I still pick them up when they have fade and like this Red Hot Chili Pepper shirt had holes in it, totally faded, totally stretched out. I had to do measurements because it was presumably at one point maybe a large and then it became an XL or maybe it was an XXL and it became a, an XL. You know, things change and that's the reason why measurements are really important too. So obviously you want to measure the neck to bottom, pit to pit, and the average sleeve, I mean, just like a sleeve length, I think. I don't even know if I provide the sleeve length, but either way, it sold pretty quickly, honestly. Um, and I, I was actually like 249, but I got shook out at 165, so that was pretty good. All right, so that's pretty much where the video ends. And uh, I thank you guys for, you know, hanging around here. I'm gonna do many awesome more flips from garage sales to eBay, and uh, I'll make sure to let you guys in on it. If you enjoyed this video, maybe you learned something, then hit the like button and, you know, consider picking up a guide. Second link down below. All right, I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy. Goodbye.